Okay, so let's start. As I mentioned before, uh, this is uh, valid for the CMT level one review, being right or making money. This is chapter 25. And um, I suggest you uh, buy uh, the Chartered Market Technician book, An Introduction to Tech Analysis. This is the uh, text um, that was published in 2016 by Willie uh, for the Market Technician. Technicians Association. How it works, how it's going to work, the material uh, that I'm going to provide highlights what is important to know, and the information is extended with consideration from my own experience. Again, this can be used for the preparation of the exam or simply to learn tech analysis in a more proper way. And uh, also uh, make sure you uh, get the book and read it for additional information and a lot of market wisdom in that book. Now, um, that's the one that I mentioned before. Now, a disclaimer, I'm not associated in any way with the MTA and I have no relation of any nature with the MTA. The views and opinions in the series of webinars are my own only and not necessarily reflect those of the MTA, FS Suite and CST. On the other hand, I'm associated as a professional member, director and treasurer to the CSTA, the Canadian Society of Tech Analysts. And it is my personal belief that the CMT program is one of the best ways to get a comprehensive yet unbiased understanding of traditional technical analysis. Okay, so this is a disclaimer for you. All right, so surprise, uh, if you are looking for a secret, well, I have to say that there is no secret in the market. We all have a need for forecasting the market and price because you want to be right, but this is not always the root of all evil. And it is not money, but it is the need and will of being right. And this is very natural. We all have that. And um, I'm Zilla, Adinda, Nick. And being right and uh, certainty is what we uh, base our life on. Often, if not always, you will not know what Mr. Mar Mar Market uh, uh, is going to do. For example, today, after the Fed uh, announcement, the market, obviously, the Fed announcement is bullish for the market because they didn't touch the interest rates. Um, but the market could have gone down anyway, uh, for instance, because in past uh, situation, a situation it did. And uh, we are also in a seasonal uh, uh, period where the market tends to uh, correct uh, into lows before the elections. So um, uh, there is no direct relationship with, between news and what the market is going to do. We really don't know what the market is going to do. In his book, Alchemy of Finance, George Soros wrote, my financial success stands in stark contrast with my ability to forecast events, okay? So um, it's very difficult to forecast what the market will do or even events uh, in response, uh, also in response to um, planned events like news. 95% of people who lose in the market are in the business of making predictions rather than trading price and managing risks. Okay, and that's very important. So if you're going to be successful, you have to start managing risk. You have to have very clear in your mind how consistency you are going to manage risk. There is one consistent behavior from it that even experts uh, or, or supposed to be experts um, in economy and finance have. They don't know. They are consistently wrong. And John Galbert said, we have two classes of forecasters, those who do not know where the market is headed and those who don't know that they don't know. And that's very, very common. And you have to admit, and I admit to uh, myself every day, uh, I don't need to do it, to do it now uh, any longer, but in the past, I, 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 I was using that. So we need to let ego uh, to go away and we have to avoid to have ego color our view of the markets and uh, you know we naturally lack in discipline and do not manage this until we learn and that's when we fail but I can tell you that even experts like Fed's profession forecasters are wrong 60% of the time and uh, they're usually too high in their projection for example in 12 months GDP the Fed has been right only 26 of the time in forecasting the 12-month GDP. 
Okay, so always they, uh, now there may be a political element there, but uh, if we look at the uh, stark numbers and the actual uh, uh, forecast that has been wrong, almost three uh, out of four times. Okay, so that's very, very important. So, for forecasting consistently, if you base your trading or investing on this, well, you have to know that that's a very difficult business. In fact, uh, in a way, consensus prediction often contain itself the seed of uh, their own destruction because they alter human action. Now, suppose that for any reason, Mr. Market was moving lower today um, based on... Uh, uh, based on the news, uh, um, which was uh, based on the Fed news. Well, uh, you know, that would have seen a lot of people on the wrong side of what it is uh, to be considered uh, normal. If there is no interest rate increase, then the market should rally, which is exactly what happened today. However, more generally, when everybody is on the same um, on the same, um, it's in the same trade, like for example in uh, 2000, uh, 1999, 2000s during the uh, bull market and the, um, the, the technological bubble. Well, uh, that was basically uh, the, 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 the actually the base for, um, uh, for the market start doing exactly the opposite. When everybody's bullish, then there is no one else who can still be bullish uh, and everybody's in and then um, when everybody's in, the market can only go the other direction. That's exactly what happened. Now, uh, be convinced of the fact that nobody can be right all the time and also you don't need to be to be successful in the market. In fact, what is important is to make money consistently. Now would you say, okay, uh, Giuseppe, well well said, well done, okay, but what that what uh, the, does that mean and how do we do it? Well, the only way to do that as we are not going to be right all the time is to, is to concentrate on risk and particularly minimizing disastrous, disastrous risks. I, I, I learned with Van Tarf, one of my mentors, and most of our uh, big losses, if not all of them, are psychological losses. Yes, you can have a big loss every now and then because you make a mistake. Um, you know, you put up a position which is a multiple what you want to put up or, um, you know, you make a mistake in execution. That can happen. But if you try to hit home runs all the time, try to make the 20 to 50% on one trade, and to do that, of course, you have to be higher leveraged, and that's something that Forex allows you to do, and Forex progress allow you to do, but it's not necessarily the right thing to do, then that's when you find yourself in trouble. And in fact, it is much better to hit singles and doubles, uh, like for example, you know, trades one to uh, to five or one to three percent. I have a trade on that uh, we're at 1.6% if he gets to the second target. He already got the first target, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review that later on, so stay. The good news is that when you implement tiny methods that force you to be disciplined, you can also remove a lot of stress or anxiety. And um, again, I'll, I'll show an example on the trade euro versus New Zealand dollar short I have at the moment later on. And uh, that is also something that some of my students know because when you start applying a structured process, it allows you to identify area of potential participation and then you uh, know how to test those areas of participation using, again, procedures, then you can remove a lot of anxiety from the overall trading process. And also when you are in a trade, you know the very reason, the reasons why you are in a trade. Well, being right is not important. Being there is very, very important. And it happened to me. And in fact, I kind of created and often these uh, reasoning in, the, in my mind in the past. One thing is to be, be right. One thing is to take the right trade, being right about the directional bias of the market and take the trade. However, if you don't have the confidence and you don't uh, take the trade, even if you are right in the, in the first place, you will not be in the trade. And this is a problem, obviously, because you, you, will, not take, um, uh, you will not take advantage of the opportunity. Now, 
uh, whether you are developing your own trading system or using someone else trading system, for example, my students uh, use some of my trading systems, you need to develop confidence uh, in those uh, trading system or whatever you are going to trade, even if you are developing yourself your own trading system, which is okay. Now, devel developing confidence is a delicate and important part of trading. How do we do that? And before we, we look at that, uh, this is why uh, all successful traders uh, were mentored at some point in their careers. I also understood in 2006 that I was not going nowhere. After studying the markets myself six years, I understood that I, need, I needed to find uh, good mentors. And Ned Davis in his book, Being Right or Making Money, says that he followed people who were not always right but made money at the end of the year. And that's the, and that's the, uh, the key there. Now, if you lack confidence, even if you accepted uh, that you might not be right all the time, but only 50% or less, and even if you're using risk management best practices, the problem is that you might still miss the boat, you might still miss uh, the trade, you must still not participate in the market because you lack confidence. And that's when I say being right and being there. You're sure that that's the right trade, that's the way to go, but then you don't take, you don't act. And that's not being there, not being the trade when you should be in the trade. Now, let me give you these uh, four real keys to making money. And these are covered in the um, CNT um, program as well. Before I get there, let me give you a summary. If you think that this business is about being right, well, you're not hitting the most important areas of this business. You should focus on being objective and grounded. So uh, being an, uh, objectively analyzing price and use a method that is grounded in the way the market works. See, the market works in a certain way, in certain ways, I would say. Uh, there are many, many, many methods that can, can capture uh, price and gains uh, according to how the market works. Uh, on top of that, so you have to use a system, a method that is grounded in the way the market works. On top of that, you have to manage risk and have a disciplined strategy. But most importantly, stay flexible. Now, this point of staying flexible, it's very relative because if you have a very structured step-by-step -step procedure, staying flexible, it's relatively easy because you just, uh, once you have developed the confidence in following your procedure, then you should not have problems in staying flexible. But more on this. Now, the four real keys to many mind. The first one is objective indicators. And as you can see here, I used the word indicators and in inverted commas. Um, uh, but the main idea here is that you have to remove emotions. And the indicators, whether you use indicators or not, I don't choose indicators, although I use uh, models. Uh, so in a way they are mathematical or logical as well. Indicators help you removing emotions. Um, they are procedural uh, or adopt a mathematical approach uh, or calculation to identify the readings of the indicators. The indicators also have to be factual and grounded again in the way the market was. That's something that I stress a lot uh, because it is, you know, we can imagine any kind of uh, uh, model and we, we like, we, we, I loved and I still love to, um, you know, create model out of uh, the way the market behaves. However, that cannot be a product of imagi imagination. That has to be tested. That has to be um, uh, related to really how the uh, the market works. So now, um, an indicator must have a long historical and, and quantified analysis to demonstrate its effectiveness. Now, uh, I think this is not enough. Uh, this is important, but it's not enough. And in fact, if you use only one indicator, and worse, if you use more than one indicator, you have to think and test and document and know all the possible combinations of this indicator and how it combines with price. Now, this might, uh, might be easier, easy to say, but let me give you uh, an idea of what the price can actually do. And, uh, and so that's why you should beware of indicators, or uh, when you use them, know exactly what you're doing. Uh, 
It is my belief that the market cannot simply be explained based on the reading of one or more indicators without price context. Okay, now very often when you will find also in the technical analysis books and uh, discussion from experts, you will find a discussion of the, of the indicator that does not take into account a number of features and properties of price. So my question to you is, how do you combine the reading of one indicators with the following characteristics of price? And this is very important. And this should actually make you think about uh, really what we have to do when we want to work with indicators. Is this an up, down, or sideways market? This is easy. Is the market near uh, resistance or support? Notice that resistance and support does not only uh, exist in the time frame you're watching, it exists also in uh, the time frame above, below. So those resistance are also relevant for uh, the way you uh, trade, the results that you can get from price, and the way you interpret indicators. What's the character of the market? Is, is a market nicely retracing 50% or very regularly, or it's an extended market, a market that has uh, actually, um, that is actually uh, clearly, um, you know, showing a price that uh, recently has uh, been extended. Uh, a very simple example, if you wish, uh, is given by, um, is given, for example, by today's price, right? When we, um, uh, when we look at today's price of um, the uh, ES here, which is what you see here, I'm showing you the 240 minutes, but you can clearly see that compared to what has been happening in the last few days, the SP500 is now kind of extended. It's breaking out for the reasons that uh, we mentioned uh, we mentioned before. So, why is that happening? That is happening because uh, of the news today, and that's an example uh, of just a simple example of extended price. So, what is the character of the, man, the market? Normal extent. What are, what are the trends? Is the market trending in the time from your uh, your observing, and how the market is trending? If it's trending in the time frames above and below, uh, only to mention. Uh, the most important time frames that you have to consider. Now, in my analysis, I always consider all the time frames from the weekly down to the one minute, and that's the way I analyze the market. Who is in control? Uh, is smart money in control, algos, for example, or dumb money is in control, like uh, the market is reacting to moving averages or other um, indicators that are lagged indicators? And are there any seasonal uh, periods or extreme readings from um, from internals, market internals, if we speak about stocks? Of course, we don't have that option uh, with Forex, but also Forex uh, might have seasonal behavior or extreme readings, although not internals. So think of interpreting price candles bars uh, without context so that's the same thing right if we do not if we do not actually consider and interpret an indicator along with all these features of price it's almost the same thing as uh, interpreting price candle bars without the context that is for example given by how those price uh, how price is located in relation to the trend just to mention one way we have to locate price okay so i hope you you appreciate uh, the uh, complexity of using indicators and why using indicators can actually be a, a pain in the back or in the neck and uh, very difficult to do because because you cannot just stick to what books tell you or what experts tell you you have to go there and painstakingly and i did this for hours and hours and hours before I convince myself that uh, it's not uh, safe or um, wise, at least for me, because they don't work for me to use indicators. And uh, that's something very, very important, okay? So this is an indication, sorry, this is, a, uh, 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 this is the reason why we should be very, very careful when we use indicators. Now, in the context of the CMT level one exam, there's one example which is related to an objective indicator, and this objective indicator is the year-to-year -year inflation 
relative to a five-year moving average. Now, you just say, okay, but this is not price. Fine. This is not price, but this is still information that is relevant uh, and still uh, falls in the realm of technical analysis because it's a technical analysis of numbers and uh, calculations. So it's not fundamental analysis, although you might also argue that inflation is a fundamental uh, measure of what's going on in the market. Anyway, this is a good example. I like this example, it's, although it's not related direct, that directly to price. I, I like to work with price directly. This example says that since 1952, every time inflation was 0.5% below the five-year average, the SP500 actually returned at 13.5% annual rate which is well above 7.2%, uh, which is the average, the long-term average of Jeremy Siegel. Um, uh, and, um, and this happened 41.3% of the time. So every time in history, uh, since 1952, in the history of the US equity market, the, um, the inflation level was 0.5 levels below the five years average, without that five period average, then the market actually uh, made money at an uh, annualized percentage of 13.5%, which is good information actually. Well, if you're an investor, then a trader, uh, but it's still good information. And the line, I have to say, the line between trading and and investing is uh, becoming more and more blurred as we learn that as investors as well, and I'm both trader and investor, uh, we have to learn how to trade. Uh, also learn how to trade on our uh, long-term account. And uh, this is something I will touch in the future because I believe it's very, very important. And we, you know, I think a lot of people have to still catch up on, on this trend. Now, while inflation was more than 1% above the five-year average, and inflation means higher cost, higher interest rates, and higher costs for companies as well, then actually the SP500 uh, lost money, and that happened 58.7% of the time. Now, in a healthy cycle, that's what happens, right? Uh, inflation is low, interest rates are low, the, um, the market goes higher as it happened from 2009, and then Naturally, what, would, what should happen is that interest rates are moving higher and inflation increases, and that that's an healthy uh, an healthy cycle. Unfortunately, at the moment we cannot have an healthy cycle because um, uh, because a highly indebted indebted um, uh, countries like uh, U.S., uh, Japan, and Italy, just to make examples, Italy is the third. Um, the country is the third highest ratio uh, of debt on GDP. These countries, and, and, and leave Italy out for a moment because they cannot control the currency, but uh, let's talk about US, for example. Uh, they cannot increase interest rate. Uh, it's not easy to do because that would increase the cost of their debt. And uh, we all know that US has a very high cost of debt. Sorry, very high cost of debt because they have a very high debt estimated in 19 trillion. So this is bad news because it means that the normal uh, business cycles cannot be maintained. And this is producing a number of side effects that eventually will need a strong correction. And I always make this example. It's like trying to control the price uh, of um, grains and, and bread. Uh, you will never be successful. History showed that every time kings and uh, rulers uh, and government came in to regulate price of, uh, of uh, commodities or in this case, um, uh, simple, uh, simple, um, uh, you know, uh, simply bread or other um, items we need, uh, the market always shot up, the price always shot up and followed the, mar the market, okay? So, make no mistakes, eventually this correction is going to come also for interest rate. We cannot leave and uh, market uh, the, 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 um, 
the society as we know as we know it cannot live on negative interest rate uh, or low interest rate forever and what is more important sorry for this little digression here is that this is creating also bubbles in other assets for example the housing market we saw that uh, already in us but also in canada so how is that happening how is possible us rates are impacting canada well <laughs> If U.S. and Japan and other countries lower their interest rate, all the other countries to follow, which makes uh, money uh, basically uh, cheap. And then this money is uh, people get into debt and they buy houses. Sometimes they buy more than what they need. Anyway, let's close this digression here. Let's look at the second real key. Uh, to making money, discipline. This seems an obvious one, but it's not really not an obvious one. Because that means to remain faithful to a system or a trading plan to the good and bad. And here I want to make a distinction between a trading system and a trading plan. Very often, this is um, these two definitions are um, in, in uh, for some people they indicate the same thing. They are not the same thing. A trading system is a set of rules that you use to analyze the market, identify setups and create a trading plan. A trading plan is, is a simple set of instructions that you follow to take a trade. So keep that in mind, that's very, very important. So when we say remain faithful, it, it implies confidence. You have to have a system. You have to have a system that create uh, consistent trading plans, and then you have to develop the confidence to stick to that. Problems can be ego, for example, getting involved in market views, you know, I do this sometimes. I did in the past much, much more often. Now I uh, tend to follow, uh, of course, a well-defined, uh, well-defined trading systems that give me a valid, validated trading plans. Other problems can be lack of confidence, and again, that requires time to build the confidence. The best way to build confidence is to study, learn, and test the idea that are submitted to you. Uh, and just not take for granted any um, advice that uh, that you get, including minds. Okay, so lack of risk uh, acceptance. So very often, one of my problems in the past was to not accept risk. I would take a trade, and I would not realize how much I would um, lose if the trade went against me. Of course, in the past, I had no stop losses as well. And so the point here is that I did not accept risk, right? If you, when you realize that your risk is 3%, 5% or 10% and you do not accept that risk up front saying, okay, I'm okay with losing that amount, then that's where the problem comes. And this is all connected to, um, of course, risk management and psychology of trading and then discipline because if you do not accept your risk and then Mr. Market brings your position in a place where you're not happy with that risk because you have not accepted it in the first place. You know what you'll do? You will tend to keep that trade and you will basically generate what are called psychological losses, big, big, big losses. And more on that later. Also lack of a well-designed system uh, as well as letting losses becoming psychological, uh, psychological losses and many, many more. Now, this uh, psychological loss is something that I've learned from Van Tarp. Uh, when I studied with him and uh, basically he says that uh, losses of 5% of more are psychological losses. Basically, they're not dictated, dictated by the uh, mistakes we do in planning or trading. They're dictated by the fact that we don't accept risk and we let our uh, position uh, go, which is basically the last thing and the, the wrong thing to do. This one is helped by systematizing automating and uh, or creating a step-by-step -step procedure to identify trade and manage opportunities and this is also uh, linked to what I mentioned before or flexibility we will see how this affects flexibility I use the fifth stalker methods and teach the fifth stalker methods and in my methods um, uh, the, the the procedure is actually very very um, uh, well defined. I have an overall process and each uh, component of the process is split in parts and we're going to see that uh, later on in a very briefly. So the key number three flexibility. This is a difficult one but it is uh, helped um, by risk management and risk acceptance. Okay now 
uh, in the context of the CMT, flexibility, the way I see it is uh, mentioned more when we take discretionary bets based, of course, on assessment, which you also could consider technical um, analysis of technical um, um, uh, verifications, for example. The example that we gave before on the on the uh, um, on the interest rate, sorry, it was on the inflation. Uh, you know, uh, you might take a decision based on what inflation is. It doesn't mean that the next day the market start moving higher or lower or in the direction that you want. Okay, so to be a winner you need to be flexible enough to change your mind or just respect a well-crafted plan. In fact, I want to stress this point as well. You need to be flexible only when you when you are discretionary. But it is my belief that if you are discretionary, at least uh, if you don't have 40 years experience and you uh, want to be discretionary, I think uh, you know, it's easy to hit the wall. Um, the more structured your approach and the more qualified and the higher the quality of uh, the uh, elimination process, in fact, I see trading as an elimination process, the easier it is to change your mind when you're wrong. And maybe sometimes you have to change your mind only because you made a mistake in the execution or uh, interpreting your plan. Because the idea here is that if you have a structured process that produces validated trading plan, then you should not be worried about uh, too much about being flexible. Of course, if you're stubborn and you don't follow your plan, well, obviously you're not being flexible. And again, a well-designed trading methods that you should be using uh, in any case uh, or a system, uh, you know, flexibility should really take a back seat and should be as simple as being able to stick to your trading plan. So uh, flexibility in the concept of the CMT uh, you know, it's more related to uh, taking uh, informed bets, but not necessarily following uh, um, a strict procedure or something that uh, uh, it's uh, very, very objective because it considers um, price in the first place. So this is what you need to make money, discipline, flexibility, and patience in trading. And uh, this is uh, the example of my high-level uh, trading process, uh, uh, which is very, very highly structured. So when you come out with a final trading plan, uh, being flexible should be pretty easy here because uh, the, the flexibility is really to decide, am I following the plan or is price respecting the plan, yes or no? And as you can see here, there is a first price structure analysis, which is multi time frame analysis, which is a trading idea that also inputs to another sub process which is called price discovery that applies the rules, applies, uh, sorry, price discovery rules, those are not trading system rules, but price discovery rules. The FIPS token timing applied to larger time frame and proprietary patterns. So all this information is proprietary information, but that's what I do. Um, when uh, you apply this process, you get a validated trading plans, you still have to filter those through your trading system. I, I have eight different trading systems, maybe to my students. And then you get the final trading plan, which is what you trade. Okay, so um, I hope you, uh, and, and, and this is not just to, uh, you know, show what I do, but also to try to put this flexibility in context here. This is very, very important. All right, so now, the uh, key number four is uh, risk management, and that's, I believe, it's trader's job number one. If you are not thinking about risk, uh, you are not uh, you are not fit for trading. Sorry, sorry to be blunt, and I was not fit for trading for years. The market reads that Paul Tudor Jones. Paul Tudor Jones says the first thing I do uh, uh, when I start during the day is try to figure out what is going to go wrong and then I spend the rest of the day trying to cover my butt. So clearly uh, risk management is on top of his mind or was on top of his mind. Even if you're a risk taker, you should always think about losing money and then making money. And I'm not, I'm not being negative here. I'm not trying to oppose those uh, motivational gurus who tell you, you have to be very positive and bring the positive results in your trading. Sorry guys, this is not uh, the case. 
you need you don't have to be negative and you, of course you have to have a positive uh, you know outlook and outcome in mind but you need to think of what you or what your system or what your plan is going to do when things go wrong okay and you have to think that before all the rest because success in trading requires that you respect one uh, essential rule which is ppc protect precious capital uh, trading is a game where capital is, is is king when the capital is gone the game is over <laughs> so it's clear that uh, managing a risk and uh, being worried about losing money has to come before being worried about making money another important thing is to learn to take calculated losses you should never lose more than a percentage of your account that's what i do uh, and only controlling losses you can really keep more money and that's the whole key of trading if there is a secret in trading is protect precious capital control your losses so you can keep more money and then of course being more right than than sorry not being more right but make more than what you lose uh, when you're not right and we saw that you know we, we will, will not be right more than 50% or 50% of the case. Warren Buffett said, rule number one of successful investing is never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. So, see, and it took years for me to reconfigure my trading around these ideas, the idea of minimizing the losses. It took years. It doesn't mean that when you focus on that, you will not have losses but you will have them in a context in which the uh, reliability of your trading uh, system and uh, the amount that you make when, you, uh, when you're right uh, actually makes for all the times that you are wrong. That's very, very important. That's a mix of risk management and money management. In uh, the book, The Inner Game of Trading, Leo Melamed said, Primary psychog psychological barrier for success is the ability to take a loss. So, um, one of the problems is this, is the ability to take a loss. And I had to work a lot in the past to do, uh, to do this. You can be right 50% or 40% of the time. And typically this is called uh, in uh, tech analysis as well as uh, trading system development reliability. And still come out as a winner. So you can have very uh, relatively low reliability and still uh, make money at the end of the year, which is what, what counts. The key is risk and money management. Now, now risk and money management, again, sometimes people, they think it's the same thing. It's not the same thing. They're two different things. This is one thing. Money management is another thing. So, and I'm concluding here. So thanks for your um, attention and uh, patience here. Keep in mind the following rules. Intelligent investing and trading and here the line again is blurring uh, away uh, as we go it's about balancing return and risk predicting assets prices and for, like for example stock bonds forex commodities gold whatever and returns can only be done with a very high margin of error so you should not really uh, try to do that it's not a game that we can win impulse is your enemy there's no way to escape risk management you have to do that and if you're a long-term investor you can diversify, although I believe that in our modern markets and modern um, um, the modern uh, new normal here of central bank policies and the way money is injected in the systems, this is not longer uh, enough. Uh, we can diversify, yes, but we have to do more. We have to trade even on our long-term uh, account, believe it or not. And active risk management, uh, it's, it's key. It's key, of course, for trading, but it's, as I mentioned, it's key for uh, long-term investing as well. Investing and trading are simple, but not easy, and you know that. They require discipline, patience, steadfastness, and common sense, and this is something that we captured already. Be patient and ignore the crowd or take advantage of it. Now, there are ways to take advantage of it as well. When the market retraces, for example, into 50% areas, those are areas of high probability 
of Algos Smart Money participating. Why? Because the crowd is in pain uh, around those areas. If you cannot resist temptations, then you should not be managing your own money and you should be giving your money to manage someone else. So, as I mentioned before, the secret to investing and trading is that there is no secret and the uh, keys that I, um, that I gave you here. Now, I just want to close and mention one thing first and then uh, extend a little bit on uh, risk management. First of all, the conclusion is that you should really, we should really make small mistakes. We will be right 40% to 60% of the time or so or less. And if you are be right 50% of the time when you are in the markets and if you do it, you can have a terrific score. We all make mistakes and we'll keep making mistakes. We lose trades following the uh, system that has been tested and that's all okay. Uh, and then, then, then though you might ask, okay, but what makes the difference and separates winners from winners from losers? Very simply, the, the, answer, the answer is winners make small mistakes while losers make big, often psychological mistakes. And it is very often that people come to me and ask, Hey, Giuseppe, I mean, I'm having, I'm having a, great, a great success uh, trading uh, discretionally, but then, uh, you know, I really made the thousands, and, but then recently I hit big losses and I lost my confidence. Well, that's the typical uh, uh, psychological mistake. That's the typical uh, behavior of uh, starting traders who have not yet understood the importance of risk management. And particularly, one of these uh, traders uh, or traders participants actually was in the market really uh, uh, for only a few months. Okay, so the keys that winners make is small mistakes, learn to make small mistakes and um, and rather than big mistakes, and a lot of people see Forex with a lot of leverage as uh, as a place where you can take uh, big risks. Um, uh, do it only when you understand what you're doing. Okay, now, let me close with risk management, the parachutes. We say that number four, key number four, risk management is traders, not, traders job number one, and it's all about risk. So, as the market can do anything, risk containment is just job number one. And how do I do it? I use a fixed fraction risk, less than 1% of the account. I use hard stops versus soft stops. I don't use soft stops. Well, sometimes I may, but I know what I'm doing. Uh, I look at market reversing in low risk areas, and I use a lot of bandwagon theory, which uh, somehow is embedded in uh, the fifth stall matters of what I do. I have a free risk approach, which means that whenever price gets into a target zero, first target, or whatever area I can cover, um, whatever area uh, of price where the gain I get equals the initial risk I got, I, I will take 50% of the position off. And this is part of my risk containment because Mr. Market can do anything. I wait for testing of area of participation, for example, the FIP stalker levels, and then I only act after I get a confirmation. The higher time frame usually wins. I make sure also that there's enough room uh, for price to move. And I study this uh, using price structure for algos, as well as dump money. Um, and one of the things I look at is moving averages. I accept risk all the time. That's very important. Think of the downside first. If you don't accept risk or you don't realize that your position is a 10% risk, total risk if something goes wrong or more, and you're not accepting it, you will not exit the market. You will hope that it will come back. And that happens all the time. It happened to me in the past all the time. Now, there are other ways to manage risk. I see trading as a process of elimination. What does, what does, does that mean is there are a lot of opportunities or allegedly good opportunities around in the market, but only a few of them are really, really worth your money. So you should do a proper price analysis and price discovery to filter out low probability opportunities. You should also stay away from uh, money management techniques that are too aggressive and are improper. See, people who use intuitive sizing, Choros, Kelly criteria, and optimal F, and percentage uh, risk based on winning percentage are people who clearly do not 
uh, understand the reality of Mr. Market. Let me just make you an example. Think of what happened uh, with the Swiss franc versus US dollar or Euro dollar, generally the Swiss franc in the beginning of 2015. So people who actually, um, uh, actually uh, study and propose the use of any of this improper money management technique, they do not trade very often <laughs> because if they would, they would not recommend such techniques, okay? Which are not uh, risky only uh, in the current market. They are risky, uh, full stop. Uh, you cannot choose them in the market unless, uh, you know, you are uh, using money that you can lose completely. But keep in mind that any of these methods can put you in debt as well if things go extremely wrong. So be very careful. Money management is a serious thing and has to be um, has to be um, uh, processed and uh, done in the right way. Also, you should eliminate these other behavior, not using uh, risk management uh, best practices, increase risk after a streak of winners or losers, revenge trading, I need to make that amount back, not respecting the psychology of the market, psychological losses. And then proper execution as well, which is another way to manage risk. All right, so uh, thanks a lot. This is the end of this uh, chapter 25, uh, part one.